Hi everyone, welcome to River Sage Journal. Hope you're enjoying the magazine. Uh, welcome to the wild game section. You know, I love hunting and fishing. And I also love to cook my game that I, that I harvest. Whether it be poultry, uh, such as pheasant, um, duck, uh, grouse, quail, or if it's big game, uh, elk, venison. Uh, nothing's better than harvesting an animal preparing it and presenting it to your family. So over the next several months, I'll show you some of the recipes that I like. Maybe we'll bring in some guest chefs to share their recipes. And I'll show you some techniques and tips that'll make your cooking go a little bit easier. So sit tight, hang in there, check out often, and we'll see you soon. Hey everyone, welcome to our first installment of our wild game cooking section of River Sage Journal. Let's start off with the basics. Let's start off with knife skills. Knife skills are important. Uh, we want to make sure that we're competent with our knives, we feel comfortable with our knives, and our technique is sound. Uh, last thing we want to do is be cutting off pieces of our finger or cutting off our finger. Uh, that's not something that we want to be doing uh, while we're cooking our, our game meats. So perfecting your knife, being comfortable with them is the first step. The three knives that I recommend are my most number one knife is my chef knife. It's a 10 inch chef knife. It's a German made knife. It's forged all the way through the handle. It's balanced. It's a little bit heavier in the handle, which I like, gives me control over the knife. It's comfortable in my hand. That's something really important. You don't want to just go buy a knife that someone tells you to go buy. This knife not, might not be for you. It's for me, but it might not be for you. So go to the store, tell me you want to handle the knife. If the, if the knife does not feel comfortable in your hand, don't buy it. It's an accident waiting to happen, okay? So I like a little bit heavier handle in my hand. That's what I prefer. But definitely go to the store, handle them, and you'll get a feel for the knife that fits you. The second knife is just a smaller version of the chef knife. It's an eight inch chef knife. I like it for smaller cuts. And then my paring knife. My paring knife is for peeling, small dices, small cuts. So there are the three knives that I would recommend. Again, it's my recommendation. You definitely want to go to the store and handle the knives. And then you'll get a feel what knife fits you. Okay, before we even start making any cuts or talking about blades or anything like that. Let's talk about our cutting board. Our cutting board is an essential piece of uh, equipment that we want, but we want a sound solid board that doesn't slide. If you have a board that slides and you go to slice a piece of vegetable or meat and it slides, you're gonna take your finger right off. Okay, so how do we keep our boards from sliding? Well, my board stays permanently here. So what I went out, what I did, I went out and bought a, <clears throat> a non-slip drawer insert for my kitchen drawers. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll just keep that here on my countertop and then I lay my board right on top. And that's a permanent situation for me of a board that will not slide. I have no issues and I know that board's not going to go anywhere no matter what I'm doing. Very important safety consideration. Now for a temporary situation, when I'm not keeping my board in, in one location all the time, I'll take some paper towels and I'll just go over to my sink and I'll wet them. Oh, it's too soft and wet. And I'll just lay that down underneath the board. Okay? And then put the board on top and that should keep the board from sliding. Okay? So two, situ two uh, situations. A permanent board. You can go and get yourself a nice non-slip drawer, uh, drawer slide or drawer a mat, and that'll keep it permanently there, it's not gonna slide, or your wet paper towels for your temporary situation. So how do we hold the knife? Do we hold it like this? Do we hold it like this? Yes, we wanna hold it like that. We wanna get our hand as close to the heel of the knife as we can with our middle finger right at the bend of the knife, okay? And we wanna get a motion where we're going down and across, down and across. Okay? Make sure it's balanced. And again, make sure it's comfortable in your hand. The last thing we want to do is be going for speed right off the bat. Okay? We want to make sure that we get accuracy and our technique right first. And that's most important. And then speed will come. So we got our right hand or left hand, whatever hand you cut with. What do we do with the other hand? 
This hand is for holding whatever vegetable or whatever meat we're, we're about to prepare. But it's a technique. We don't want to have our fingers laying out. Okay, we want to have our fingers in a little triangle with the, with the thumb right behind it. And that knuckle right there will be your guard. As you can see, it never goes near my fingers. So I can slice up and down and never be in, in danger of cutting my fingers. Okay, so good grip in your hand. Okay, in your right hand, if you're right-handed, and your triangle in your left with your, your middle knuckle sticking out and that's gonna protect your fingers. Okay, so sharpening knives. I sharpen my knives just about every time I use them, whether it's uh, for slicing an onion or if it's slicing meat, I always sharpen my knives. What you wanna have is a good sharpening stone or stick, okay? And you wanna make sure that your finger's behind those guards, okay, it's real important. Now, this is a dangerous uh, motion that could actually cut. You don't wanna to get too close down here either. So what you're gonna do is take your blade, and I'm not gonna come at an angle like that. I'm just gonna lay the blade flat and just lift it up slightly, and I'm gonna slide it away and come back. Slide it away, come back. Slide it away, come back. Slide it away, come back. Try to use the whole stone if you can. Okay, and don't come down here. Make sure your fingers are not over top. You can see that could be a problem. Okay, so slide it away, come back. Try not to worry about speed right now. Speed will come. Okay, you don't need to be speed. That's, let's just slide it away, come back. Get your technique down right. Your knives will be sharp. And a sharp knife is probably safer than any dull knife. Because you're gonna have nice clean cuts. Dull knife, you're gonna force it, <clears throat> and that's when you start getting cuts, okay? Sharp knives, clean cuts, great sharpening stone. Make sure you have these in your kitchen. So let's start cutting some uh, vegetables. Let's start with a red onion. First thing you wanna do, you never wanna to try to attempt to cut something that's unstable and rolling around. That's, that's gonna cause more accidents than anything. So I usually cut the root off first, and that gives me a nice base. I can lay the, the onion down flat. See a nice space here, lay it down flat. Now I cut them in half. Okay. Cut it in half, take one half, peel the onion back. Uh, peeling and probably crying is the hardest part of cutting an onion. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna take the tip of the knife and I just wanna make little slices using that finger as my guide again I'm not going to go fast because I don't want to have any accidents I just make sure I got that nice and then I come in here like this and I do a nice little slice in okay and now watch when I cut I slide down and across down and across down and across using my finger as a guard okay and I have a nice fine dice of onion Now we could we could use this end here. We could cut, chop that up, depending on what you need. But that's a nice fine dice of onion. So now let's look at slicing. So I want to slice a cucumber. Okay. First thing I want to do is again I want to make this stable. So what I'll do is I'll take top and tail. That's what I call it. Just chopping off the top and the tail. Again, I'm making sure that I'm as level as I can, as stable as I can, using my knuckle and then pop, pop, pop. And sometimes they will fall on the floor, so that's no problem. We just don't use them again. Or give them to the dog, either one. Okay? Nice, even slice of cucumber. Using that knuckle again, that's really important, that knuckle guard. You're not going to cut your finger if you keep that knuckle there. Okay? Okay, so um, practice is probably your most important thing you can do. It's just like anything else. If you practice, you're going to get better at it. So get some old vegetables out that might be you know, not quite ready or good enough to eat. Uh, so get them out and use them as practice. Cucumbers, onions, some zucchini, uh, squash. That's a tough one to do. That's one um, where you really want to do top and bottom so it sits nice and firm and stable on your, on your board. Okay, so practice is real important. Uh, one last thing is what happens if you do cut your finger? And I believe me, I've cut my finger several times. So uh, do you stop cooking? No. Uh, get a good bandage, put it on, and I like these little um, these little finger, I hate to call them condoms, but finger condoms, that's what they look like. And they just kind of, you get your bandage on first, take your little uh, 
condom here <laughs> and you roll it onto your finger and that will keep any blood or any mess out of the, out of the food you're cooking. And you still can be pretty functional with it. Okay, so uh, they're called uh, blue finger nitrate cots. So we won't call them condoms anymore. We'll call them cots, okay? But they're really a lifesaver. Uh, a lot of times I've cut my finger so bad that I, you know, I'm bleeding and I don't want to stop cooking for my family or friends. So I make sure I go get my bandage on my finger, make sure it's nice and clean cut or cleaned up, to clean the cut up real good. And then I use my little cot and I'm back in business, ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I look forward to bringing you some great game recipes. I think in our next edition of um, the Wild Game Cooking, we'll cook up a pheasant. I know everybody loves pheasant. and It's one of America's popular game birds. So um, stay tuned and I'll have that on next month. Thanks.